welcome to Create a Life You Love, which is a series I do for WSCS and um, hopefully Rude Rangers TV. I think it's being aired on there, but I don't know. Anyway, so today we are going to talk about be you. Be uniquely you. Be the you you're meant to be. And a lot of us don't know um, really what that means, who that is, so on and so forth. So what I want to say right now, right here, is we are going to talk about that. We're going to put it all on the table, well, as much as I can, and we're going to go from there. One of the things that I have been very blessed throughout my life as I get really comfortable is that growing up, I had a very, very unique for me upbringing. Um, and I don't, I don't remember a lot of my childhood, but I also don't care that I don't remember a lot of my childhood because that's a past I'm focused on now. I'm focused on moving forward. Um, and I'm really blessed that I can have that perspective. Very rarely do I hold on to something from the past, which is a key to creating the future. If you're steady holding on to the past and what happened to you yesterday, last year, or, oh my God, a, uh, two years ago, five years ago, 10 years ago, let it go because that is stopping you from all the blessings that are in front of you. You can't go into, I always compare it to energy, okay? You can't go into this beautiful existence that you want, which is an energy of, of um, lightness, carrying all this heaviness, right? So if, let's just, Let's just say it right here, right now. Nobody had a perfect upbringing. I don't care what your life looks like right now or what anybody's life looks like right now. I don't care how much money people had growing up. Nobody had a perfect upbringing, okay? Everybody no matter what their parents did, what their life looked like from the outside, everybody had their uh, stuff, okay? We all have stuff growing up. We all have stuff in school. It just looks different. We all have stuff as adults, right? We, we have stuff that we have been given as gifts on our path to help us learn to cope and to create. Okay, so we're in a generation now, and please, if you like what I say, awesome. If you don't like what I say, nothing I can do about that. We have come into this generation that is debilitating, okay? It is simply debilitating, because we're in a place where everyone thinks everybody else is responsible for, hold on to your seats, their feelings. You said something I didn't like. It was uncomfortable for me to hear that. Okay. Use your problem-solving skills in your mind and fix that. Things are going to happen you don't like. If you didn't learn in childhood to hear something you didn't like and cope with it, learn it as an adult. Because there's a lot going on out there that we don't like. Everyone. You're not unique. On a daily basis, we hear things and see things we might not like. It's a part of life. But it's also a part of creating. Because when you have something in front of you you don't like, whether it's as a child or as an adult, you have the opportunity to create a solution. 
So without those things that we don't like, without those things that we find uncomfortable, whether they be feelings or actual, feelings are actual things, don't get me wrong, but actual things like physical things in front of us, we don't have the opportunity to find a solution, a resolve, okay? So part of everything that happens in our life, even in childhood, whether we remember it or not, is something that is helping us create our life and our future, our moving forward. So no matter what your past is, you have to look at it as a gift, as a present that allowed you to create where you are now. And if you don't like where you are now, guess what? It's okay. Because you have the ability to create, recreate, co-create this existence that is amazing. I don't care who you are, what your background is, where you come from, what, what happened, why it happened. You have the ability to create an existence that is amazing. Now, without going into too much detail about my past, because again, it's my past. It, it, it might have helped me get to where I am and have a lot of understanding for where I am, but it no longer dictates where I'm going. And I, I sure enough don't carry it around with me like a victim. Um, if we are in that space of, but this happened, and if we say, but, and follow it up with anything like this happened, you or this statement, you don't understand. Okay, you're probably right. I don't understand. Because I don't have those thought patterns. Change your thought patterns. But um, <clears throat> I didn't have a perfect upbringing. I didn't. Believe it or not, I don't know anybody who has. I don't know anyone who comes from a perfectly functional, perfect parents situation. And, and again, I just said this on Psychic Medium, Tony Green, my show that airs every Monday at noon on YouTube Live on Rude Rangers TV. Um, they air it on Roku or Roku and on Amazon Fire, and I think on Apple TV. But I just said this, if you had the perfect life, the perfect upbringing where nothing went wrong in your life, please write that book, make that into a movie. <laughs> because I think everybody would like to know what what's that like? What, what's that about? But I spent a, a deal of my childhood in foster care. And, you know, for the reasons that we go into foster care, you know, not because, and my mom was not abusive to us. I did not go in because of physical abuse from my mother. Okay. It was more of a, um, huh, this is a lot more than I wanted to put out there. It was actually um, being left with people who were babysitting for us that should not have been and inappropriate things happening at a very, very young age. Okay, so I wish I could stop this and redo it and take that part out. <laughs> but all right now, here we go. We're just going to continue. Okay, so Having said that, I think I just want to stop this show and delete it right now. I'm not comfortable talking about myself like this, but I'm just going to stop now. But the point is, we all have stuff and we all have the ability to create, to take those things and use them as tools to help us form our future or roadblocks that keep us stuck. And if you think for one moment that just because you perceive somebody else's life as better than yours, that it was better than yours, they just maybe don't put their stuff out there. 
maybe they don't go around vomiting their whole sad or every bad incident that happened in their life on everybody. It doesn't mean it didn't happen. It doesn't mean they didn't have ever have a bad experience. Maybe they just don't let it rule their life. Now, I believe everybody has a purpose. And the things that form us, even in our early childhood, help us become the people that we're meant to be. Even the things happening today in our life are helping us become the people we're meant to be tomorrow. You have gone through a very unique set of circumstances, an extremely unique set of circumstances. Even if somebody else went through what you went through, even if somebody else experienced some of your experiences, nobody has experienced exactly what you have in the way you have. Nobody can bring your experiences to the table. Nobody, your life experiences, your educational experiences, whatever they are, nobody can bring them to the table the way you can. And I believe, I don't care what anyone says, every single person has a purpose, a reason for being here, something they are here to accomplish. And in many cases, we have many purposes. Sometimes it evolves from here to here, to here, to here, to here, and it's in the same industry. Other times you can go from being this, like I started in the health and fitness industry at the age, I think of 16, my first job was in a health club and I loved it. I would have probably stayed in the health club industry my entire life. I like working out is one of my favorite things. It, I know most people just hate it, but I love it. And I love muscles. Like I have a really small bicep, but I love my little bicep. <laughs> it's so hokey, but I love it. I love working out. I love the endorphins it releases. I love the feel of working out. And I, I've known since I was very young, strong body, strong mind, strong mind, strong body. They go hand in hand. It's that willpower, that control of yourself. So many people are out there trying to control everybody else because this is out of control. Get this in control and you won't give a happy hoo-hoo what anybody else is doing with anything in their life. Trust me, this girl knows. Okay. Okay. So my first career was in the health club industry and I was there until that particular club went out of business and it was an all women's health club and I loved that. Okay, I did. And I worked my way up to a district manager where I was managing three clubs and I was so happy. Now, my idea of a dream job and somebody else's idea of a dream job are completely different because we are unique. We're not all supposed to have or want the same things. I'm very blessed. Growing up, nobody ever told me, you're supposed to be this when you get older. You're supposed to be that when you get older. It just kind of happened for me. And it always happened naturally. Like whenever one step was done, another step was there. When the health club closed, one of the girls who was an employee of mine called me and said, hey, where I'm working, they have an opening. You're going to be perfect. Get here now. I didn't even get interviewed. I walked in there like, start. Because she had told them about me. And I was like, okay, what, what do I do? And so I've always gone with the flow. I've never been in that place. Well, we all have moments, and I'll tell you about one of my moments in a moment. We all have moments where we fall, sometimes literally. <laughs> and we all have moments where we falter, okay, where there's a little hiccup. But, but do we let that, you know, do we let it keep it down, keep us down? Do we let it put that big rock or boulder on our back left that we can't get out from under? right? No, no, we don't. 
Instead, instead, we keep moving forward. We don't get to the point where we fall. And we don't especially get to the point where the boulder's on our back. And then if the boulder is on our back, if we feel like there's a boulder on our back, we just have to say to ourselves, the boulder's empty. It has no weight. I'm going to get up and I'm going to keep going. Okay. I believe and I know with every ounce of my being, the more we're in the flow, the more we're moving forward, the more we're going on that path, on that track, in that direction to where we want to be and what we want to do, even if we don't know what it is. Listen, when the health club closed, I had no idea what my next step was going to be. I showed up for work. There was a sign on the door, closed, bankrupt. We didn't know it was going through that. The employees didn't know. So I turned my little car around, went home. And as soon as it hit the news, my friend called me. I didn't even have time to be like, well, I'm going to take a week off from working eight in the morning till nine at night, seven days a week. <laughs> my friend called me and said, hey, I, I got the hookup. And I said, okay. And I went. Okay. And again, I was working. <laughs> I was working like however many days a week because that's just who I am. I don't care. Now what somebody else's idea of the perfect job, their purpose might be that nine to five, that set structured thing. To me, that's, that's like prison to me. I could never do the same thing over and over every single day in the same place, but that is being uniquely you, okay? And there's nothing wrong with nine to five. For those who love the consistency, who can't handle change, nine to five is beautiful and perfect, but that's also why there are so many different careers available. Okay, now let's get back to you being uniquely you. Deep inside each and every one of us, there is something that it, it, I don't, for each of us, it's different and it can be the same career. It can be, excuse my little itches. It can be the same career, but it's done differently because only you have that way of doing it. You, even if you're doing the exact same job as the person next to you, only you can do it the way you do it. You bring your uniqueness to the table to do it in that way. A lot of people are doing careers or working jobs they don't love. And okay, we all have bills to pay. We all have uh, maybe babies to support or animals to support. I don't, I don't, my, my babies passed away, my little doggies. Again, TMI, I need to stop letting my stuff fly out during this show. <laughs> By the end of the show, people are going to be like, I didn't know all that. <laughs> Nobody knows all that about me. <laughs> um, and I, I work really hard, not work really hard. I'm just kind of private. Like I don't talk about my stuff like that. Anyway, uh, we all have things that what we have to pay what we're supporting whether it be our our mortgage or our rent or our car payment or our phone bill it doesn't matter so we might have to do that job until we get into our purpose okay and for each person whatever your purpose is and i'm going to i'm going to tell you something your purpose is what you already love it's what you are already passionate about, what you are already always looking up online, always thinking about, can't wait to get the next uh, thing of it, right? That's part of your purpose. Now, I've said this in many of my shows in the past. I'm going to give a shout out to my mama 
She's up there watching down on me. And actually, she's right here. For those of you who don't know, I'm a psychic medium. So I, I do, I see dead people all the time. <laughs> My mom is one of them. <laughs> uh, so anyway, um, my mom had her, when she was putting herself through school, bartended part-time. When she was working her nine to five, she also had a part-time always. She baked wedding cakes. She didn't go to school for that. She didn't get training for that. There was just something inside of her that my mom could always bake or cook. She would just amazingly be able to like get into this mode where she would just know what to put in a cake and start baking it. And the way she, she could decorate a wedding cake and you would not know she did this in her kitchen. You would think this came from a bakery that specialized in wedding cakes. That that's how good and the taste. Oh my God. I miss my mama's cakes. I'll just tell you that for sure. I do. Um, but she also uh baked a lot. She was an amazing cook. She was. So even though she had her nine to five, she had a part-time thing that was her passion. And she could have taken it full time if she ever would have wanted to. But she liked the security of her nine to five and the insurance. And even after my mom was retired, she still worked all the time. She worked at the um, ADS and she, she just always was doing something. OK, so whatever it is you're doing right now, if it's not if it doesn't feed your passion, if it doesn't feed your fire, it's not your purpose. What your purpose will do is get you out of bed in the morning and get you running. Now, I'm not saying there's not fear with following your purpose because there's always steps to be taken. There's always something that's going to come in and you're going to have to change something in your life possibly to get there if you're not there. And yes, it does take action. So if you have gifts, oh, I have, I have gifts. Great. Start using them. If you have um, something inside of you, a desire, an invention, a book, a, an idea for a show, you have to start putting it out there. Now, if it's if it's content that you don't want someone to steal with you from you, put it out there in a notebook. I don't my personal stuff. I don't even put it on the computer until I'm ready, ready. You wouldn't believe the stack of notebooks I had full of handwritten gibberish that no one else could read because it's my content. I don't want, like, if somebody takes my computer, I don't want them to get it, right? So if it's something that you don't want someone else to get or steal, then put it out there energetically. Work with your angels, your guides, whatever, it, whomever you work with. I know CEOs of companies that are, no one would ever guess this, but every morning they sit down. I know one guy particularly who sits down every morning with Vince Lombardi and a, 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 he has a round table with these people who were he truly admired and I'm not going to say he's calling them in but he sits down and discusses his day with them and then perceives their answers back to him and maybe they really are there because once we're on the other side we're omnipresent we can be everywhere at once and we can help those who call on us to help them. So sit down with people who have done what you've done. If you want to work with energy in a new way, call in Nikolai Tesla. If you want to work with whatever it is you want to work with, energetically work with those people. 
and your angels, your guides, those who have passed on, who have already accomplished what you want to accomplish, call them in, have them help you, put it out there. Your way of doing it, even if it's already out there, is needed. If you have an idea, if you have a thought, it's being given to you because it's something you're supposed to use. You're supposed to put it out there. You're supposed to bring it to people. Even if it's not a full-on career, it's something you're supposed to bring to the masses, no matter how many those masses are. Every person I know that's an inventor says pretty much the same thing. Either they were meditating or they were deep in thought or they were thinking about it and the ideas just started flooding into them. Where your attention goes, your thoughts grow. So if you let your attention go to one specific area and you really focus in on it, the universe is going to bring that back for you. When you're talking about your purpose, and many of us have many purposes, trust me, again, I started in the, the fitness industry, and here I am now doing this. And when I started doing this, I was terrified. Not everybody in my family loves what I do. As a matter of fact, I am the only one other than my youngest brother, Stephen, who has Down syndrome and also has is very gifted. Um, nobody else in my family even wants to talk about this with me. If I bring it up, they cannot change the subject fast enough. <laughs> and one of my one of my sisters even said to me, "Don't bring it up to me or my girls, and we don't have a problem with it." And that's okay with me. You want to know why I'm not supposed to share it with them? They're not my people to work with. Thank God. I can't even imagine like if my family was constantly, you know, is mom here? Is grandpa here? Is my aunt here? I mean, that would be a full time job in and of itself. So not everybody is supposed to love your purpose or your passion or even understand it. That's OK. Who cares? OK, who cares if they don't? It's not for them. This is your life. It's about you. And you're the one who takes the ball, who takes the reins, who takes this by the horns or whatever thing you want to say and rides it to your glory. So when I started this, doing this, first of all, again, I was a little terrified. Even though I'd done it my entire life, I didn't know it was, it was a thing because things just come out of my mouth. Gets me in a lot of trouble, <laughs> a lot of a lot of trouble sometimes. Things about myself, things about others. Uh, when people are talking to me, answers just come flowing out. I'm just going to take a quick pause here and say, for those of you watching me on WSCS, if you'd like to see the rest of this show, please go to YouTube, Psychic Tony Green Psychic Medium. And you'll be able to watch the rest of this show. Thank you so much for joining me on WSCS.